I tell my agent, like, damn, bro, like 50,000? I just made more than that, bro. Like my rookie year, like my first year out, I made way more than 50,000, bro. I'm not, no, I'm not taking that. I'm not, I'm sorry. Keep looking. So I fucked up one of them Joe Dumar situations. Me not fucking realizing that the money wasn't the problem. Like the money, fuck the money, Corey, because it's, it's valid money. It's straight money. It's tax-free. It's $50,000, $5,000 a month. You're straight. And, and with bonuses, we probably can get you more. Fine. I should have thought about this, but I wasn't. It's top league Greece, and you're going to play against three Euro League teams. It's not about the money. It's about where you're going who you finna be playing against, who you finna be playing in front of, the situation you're finna have, where you're in a Greece, you're in Greece. Just touch down, back on road, counting money, man, you know how it goes. Hit the VIP and tell my bitch to strike a pose. Hop in mode, hop in mode. My girl wants to party all the time, party all the time, party all the time. <laughs> hey, Lou, K. Hey, Lou, what it do, cuz, man, just a part two of the Corey Lucius story, man. Thank you for everybody who tuned in on the first ep- uh, the first part of the Corey Lucius episode. Now it's the part two of the Corey Lucius episode. So thank you for coming to the barcode again, man, taking the time out your day, bro, pulling up. I appreciate you. Love you, baby. You already know. Appreciate you having me, man. Let's get to it. Hey, and that's low key should be your intro song for real, for real. That's fun. That's funny. Party all the time. Party all the time. Um, <laughs> no, but, but but because before we get into it though, I got a few. I got a few true false questions. All right, it's true or false. All right. So the first one, Manute Bo, is it true or false that Manute Bo? Kill the lion with a spear. True. <laughs> That's actually true. <laughs> I bet. It yeah. sounds like it. Yeah. Uh, Muggsy Bowes, the shortest player to ever play in the NBA. True or false? True. Damn. That's true. Okay. That's true, y'all. So, Corey got two out of two. So, last one. Shaquille O'Neal once fell out of a tree, broke his arm, because he was trying to imitate Spider-Man. True. Sound like something he'd do. Damn. Corey's three for three, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like something dude to do. Corey three for three, y'all. So that was all true. Okay. All right. Now let's get into it. So we ended the first part with you uh getting dismissed from Michigan State and uh, you know, having to tell your mom, your dad, and uh you went through, you know, a little hard time, a hard moment. Mm-hmm. And um, you get a call, you get a call from Fred Hoiberg. You know Chris Allen hooked it up. You get into Iowa State, but when you get into Iowa State, you got to sit out a year, correct? Yeah. All right. So the thing I want to know is that year that you were sitting out, what was your mindset like? Like, what were you doing to prepare yourself? Even though you had a long year ahead of you, what was you doing to prepare yourself for that uh, upcoming season? Man, pretty much just staying in the gym because, like, I, I knew coming from Michigan State, being the two Final Fours, I went to national championship and all of that. Like, people knew who I was. Like, people knew that I went to Iowa State and all of that. But also my mindset was I got one year. Like, after this year, I have one year of college basketball to really show and prove what I can do, like, my to to my best abilities. Like I got one year and after that shit, I got to make a decision. It's either hopefully I go to the NBA or I got to, you know what I'm saying, decide what I'm going to do with my basketball career after that, go overseas essentially. But that was my whole mindset, really just trying to stay ready as much as possible. Of course, we had to work out with the team. We still had to practice and all of that. But I actually sat out with Will Clyburn. He playing overseas in the Euro League right now. And we sat out together that year. So, and he was my roommate. No, that year I sat out, I was still, Chris was still playing. So Chris was actually my roommate that year. But me and Will was real close because when the team traveled, we had to stay back. We couldn't travel because we sat out a year. So technically we couldn't travel with the team and every, and all that. So we had to stay back, watch TV, watch the games on TV at the arena or whatever. But 
we was working out all the time. Wake up, work out, do whatever it did. So he made it, being with him, having somebody on my side would made it a little easier, but that was my whole mindset. Like, damn, I got one year of shit. I got to do what I got to do to make it happen. Yeah, exactly. And I was going to actually ask that, like, man, I know that had to be tough to be, like, watching your team that you practicing with, working out with, and, you know, you guys have a road game. You got you guys got to stay back. So mm-hmm. that's dope. And I, and I remember the uh, the guy, Will Clyborne too. Y'all actually were tight. Um, how was the rest of the team? You know, I know you and Will had a good relationship, but how was the rest of the team relationship, even though you two – you know, wasn't playing that year. Yeah, it was cool. Like, Ames was a small place. Like, it wasn't like Michigan State where there's a lot of stuff to do. I mean, it's a bigger city in Michigan and East Lansing, I mean, so it was a lot more to do and a lot more so people can go their own ways and do their own thing. So Ames was kind of a little smaller, so we kind of had a little tighter group, like a little tighter-knit group. Guys hanged around to each other more, uh, you know what I'm saying? Going to each other's cribs and everything like that, just hanging out. And when we did go out, we went out in packs. It was really damn near like the whole team type thing going out. You know what I'm saying? So it was cool. And even though we sat out, and it wasn't just us sitting out that year. We had other people sitting out. So everybody, we that year, the team that actually played was like Royce White, Chris Allen, Scott Christopherson, and all of them guys. So they played, and they, you know what I'm saying? They was cool. Chris Babb, Tyrus McGee, all them played. And we actually played with a couple of them the next year. So, shit, it was still cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it's crazy. Now, you bring up Royce White. Now, was it – is it actually true that he's scared to get on airplanes? Like, he never flew in his life or what? Uh, I mean, before Iowa State, I'm not sure. I'm assuming that's what they said. But, like, it kind of like – I don't want to speak on another man's mental yeah. state or, you know what I'm saying, what, but it kind of caught everybody off guard, like. Because earlier that year, the year I sat out, they had a tournament. They went and played overseas. So everybody flew, and he didn't say nothing. Like, none of that was brought up at the time. He flew with no problem. Maybe he did have some issues on the flight. I don't know, because we weren't able to go. I, nobody said nothing that he had issues. But as soon as, like, the Big 12 season come around when it's time to play conference teams, all of a sudden he can't fly. So... I, I I don't know where it came from. I don't know. Maybe it just like randomly. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. People do, you know what I'm saying, discover stuff and, you know what I mean, things happen to people randomly and it just, yeah, yeah that yeah. was one of those things that it just came about. Yeah. And I, I you know, I don't want to, you know, this yeah. is a good show, but <laughs> I asked that because he was a, he was like one of the star players for Iowa State. And I know that y'all, you know, for the NCAA tournament and stuff like that, y'all got to like yeah. fly and try. So I always wanted to ask that though. So <laughs> after a while, he started, he started driving to the games. Like once all that stuff started happening, like he started driving, he, yeah, he was driving to the games. Oh man. Listen, I thought I was scared to fly, man. Uh-uh. I ain't, uh, no, so yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, how now? I know when when you when you a head coach, you know you focus on the players who are active and playing. You feel what I'm saying? And I know Fred Hoiberg had like a, a laid back demeanor. You know, mm-hmm. seemed like a pretty cool guy. Yeah. For sure. Um, when you guys wasn't playing that year. Did you guys still feel a part of the team? Like, did he, like, make y'all feel that y'all were still a part of the team? Or <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. Like, we did, bro, we, we pretty much did. We was on the team. We did everything the team did besides travel with them, to be honest. That's the only thing we couldn't do is go to a away game. So, even at home games, we still sat on the bench. We still was right there. We were part of everything that happened. Uh when they went to the tournament and everything, we went to the tournament and all that stuff. So we, it was pretty much, we was on the team, still part of the team. We just, shit, we just wasn't playing that year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, one, um, was you getting a lot of, a lot of media action? Like, were they still trying to ask you questions like on campus reporters about the Michigan state situation or, you just like went to Iowa State and you know, like, hey, Michigan State, that stuff is over with. Yeah, they didn't really ask like why I like what happened as far as why I left. 
but they were asking like comparison, like, how does it feel to be here? Do you miss it? How was it planned for Izzo? How was it planned for Hoiberg now? Are you, you know what I'm saying? The difference and stuff like that. It wasn't really, oh, we heard this and that. And we know you were smoking weed. So are you going to be smoking weed? <laughs> no, it was, it was never nothing like that. But they did ask like similarity questions, comparison questions. And stuff like okay. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually funny, Corey. I was like, well, are you still smoking weed? They're going to be smoking weed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's crazy. But all right, so fast forwarding, not too much. I want to fast forward to the season when you did, when you started to play, you know, mm -hmm. and um, were you inserted in the starting lineup? Were you competing for time? Like, how was that flow and that transition, you know? Coming from Michigan State, coming off the bench, uh, getting dismissed from the team, you know, not playing for a year, and then coming to Iowa State, like, was you inserted in the starting lineup? What's going on? Talk to me. Oh, man, come on, man. I'm, I'm going to slap you through this computer for asking me about some starting talks. <laughs> Listen, I, ain't, I wouldn't have went there if I wouldn't, if I knew I wouldn't be starting, to be honest. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because this is my last year. I'm not coming off the bench. Like, I'm coming from Michigan State. I am not coming off the bench for no other team that I'm come, going to, unless I'm going to uh, the, whoever won nationals that year, the national championship that year. If I'm going to your team and you got a starting point guard coming back, all right, but I split time with him. But I'm going to compete and show you that I probably should be starting. But any other team in the country, any other school, no, I'm starting for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah. But no, uh, we had some we had some other point guards on our team though that was good. Boo Boo Paolo, my guy. Uh, uh, I forgot we had Austin McBeth. We had some other guys that were there that was you know some some solid point guards for sure. Some good players. But as far as me competing for starting minutes or nothing, anything like that, no, I knew I was coming in starting. But it was a good transition to be honest, man. Like Fred knew who I was, everybody else knew who I was, who was playing, not saying it cockily or, you know what I'm saying, nothing like that, but they knew I was a good point guard and they knew what type of player I was. So Fred was a player's coach. He played in the league. He been in the league's front offices. He know the game. So we were really just a shit pick and roll team up and down. We were a five out team. Everybody could shoot the ball. Everybody could handle the ball, bring the ball up, man. It was a lot of fun playing for Fred. I'm not going to lie. That shit was fun. That yeah. shit was fun, bro. That yeah. was fun. If I could have played, no disrespect to Izzo. Izzo, my guy forever. I appreciate him. But if I could play for four, Fred Hoiberg for four years or even two, like that sit-out year, if I could have had them two years with Fred, well, man, whew. It would have been a different ball yeah. game more. Sure. Yeah, so, yeah, because he just so he is. I know. Well, I mean, I just seen him coach, and he like seemed very, very laid back. Like, he, did he do any like yelling? Like, how was he? <laughs> no, nah, he he did sometimes, but you know, he had like a uh, he had a pacemaker, so he had heart problems. So, and then I remember one time, that's my guy. We actually like during the year, he had some problems where he had to get it changed. So we all had to go to the hospital and everything for him and stuff like that. So he didn't really like get too riled up but when he did like you know what I'm saying we took it like all right we got it you know what I'm saying he's serious now you know what I'm saying so he was so laid back it's like when he do get mad bro you can't do nothing but respect what he's saying he gotta be mad right now you know, you yeah. know what I'm saying yeah so yeah. it was cool though man he was cool he was real laid back you know what I'm saying when he knew what he was talking about when he explained stuff it was like simple this is why we do this we doing that that rotate this and it was real simple type NBA style. So it was real easy to adapt to. Real easy. Back. Real how easy. You, how you been wanting to play for? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To adapt to. Yeah. Y'all had a real, y'all had a real good team. Y'all had a real good team, man. Uh, we, we went to the tournament that year. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I want to senior year. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I wrote this down. You average 10.1 points and then 5.6 assists mm -hmm. and I feel like you know your height playing division one the talent that you have the talent that you had on that team I feel like 10, 10 points and we can round up with the assists so 10.6 assists For sure. I feel like that was pretty good were, were you kind of like happy with it being your senior year was you happy with your stat line no 
you know, and now that I and I didn't really look at it until I'm like looking back. Cause even then, like during the season, I had some games where I was scoring like 15, 18, 17. Like when we played Kansas, I had 20. When we played uh West Virginia, I had 25. Like I it was some 10 games in there that I did score, but it, I should have did it more, like more, like which I could have. But I, you know, me, bro, I'm so worried about or I had games where I had there was multiple games. I probably had, you go back to the stats, it's probably like eight, nine games that year when I had eight assists, nine assists, 10 assists, seven assists. And I'm dropping that motherfucker off when I'm only getting eight, nine points. Like, yeah. as I grew older in my basketball career, bro, I always been a bucket. And then to this day, I could be a bucket. Mm-hmm. I was more like, all right, shit. Pass that motherfucker. Let's get let's let me sh- let me show you these the way I can like like let, let, get another nigga a bucket, get somebody else a bucket. You know what I'm saying? So looking back at it, man, I could have did more. That's yeah. a straight st- stat line. That is solid for the yes. division thing. The school, yeah. that's solid. I could have did more. I could have averaged like thirteen. Yeah, yeah, thirteen, fourteen. The assist is cool. I'm cool with that. Like yeah. five, six assists. I probably could have did seven, eight, but I'm cool with that. Yeah, but I yeah. could have had like 13, 14. I could have averaged more. Like it's 15. Sure. But do you think it was like that because of the talent you had? Who who was all on that team? You yeah. had you, Will uh-huh. Clyburn. We had Chris Babb. We had Tyrus McGee. We had Georges Niang, who is in the NBA right now. We had Nas, uh, Mitru Long. He played overseas. He, we had a little stint in the NBA. Uh, we had uh, uh, Book. Big uh Anthony Booker. Uh, Did you have uh what's his name? Um Abdul Nader. Nope, he came after we left. Okay, okay. You know, okay. Yeah, we had um who came off the bench. We had a couple other guys, but we had we had a st- solid team to be honest. But mm-hmm. Will was our leading scorer. I think Will might have averaged like eighteen that year. Mm-hmm. Bab was our shooter, so Bab averaged like fourteen. Crit- Tyrus was like was like our energizer bunny off the bench. He averaged like 12 and was also a shooter, bro. So that's really where all my assists was coming from. Them, me driving, doing what I do, finding them. Bab was a strictly shooter. He's shooting like three, four, five, six, seven, eight threes a game. For show. Yeah. For show. Well, with you saying that's that line, K Lou, with you averaging 10 and six, I feel like that's great. Because you got yeah. guys averaging 12 and 17 and 15 and 14. You did good, Kill. But I, I know you personally, so I know you like. I should have did, yeah. did more. Yeah. I should have did more. Yeah. yeah. Know, that's that line, you know what I'm saying? I had, I had a little buzz. I had a little buzz while going in, you know what I'm saying, coming out of college. So it was cool. Mm-hmm. Now, that that's the Big 12. Uh, how how What was the difference between Big 10 and Big 12? Big 10, slow down, beat you up basketball. We ain't scoring high 80s. We finna score 50, 60, maybe 70 points. That type of basketball. We gonna play half court basketball. Now it might be different. It's a little different now, to be honest. Back then though, oh no, slow down. That's where the corn fed guys at, the big (laughs) white boys. Yeah, like, yeah, they ain't playing around. So we slow down, but we ain't gonna do big 12. We up and down. Yeah. Up and down. We're trying to score 90 points. We're trying to score 100. For yeah. real. As many yeah. possessions as we can get. Come on. Yeah, that's dope. I know you is loving that, Corey. Oh, All you I loved it. Yeah. Loved yeah. It. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, who was some of the, the top point guards or top players that y'all played against during your senior year in the Big 12 conference play? Uh, Pierre Jackson. He was at Baylor. That was his senior year. Uh, who was at Kansas? They had Elijah Johnson. Uh, who else was on that team? They had Ben McLemore that year. He wasn't a point guard. And I forgot who the other point guard was. Who was in the Big 12? Uh, Big 12, they had Texas, um, too. Yeah, I'm thinking who was Texas. Kansas. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Texas, they actually had two, like, Me- Texas and Kansas State, they had two Mexican uh, point guards. They was tough, though. They One dude named was Rodriguez, I remember, in uh, Kansas State. I forgot the little dude name. 
that was at Texas, but they were small, like little strong, fast, quick point guards. They was tough. West Virginia had um my my guy that played for uh the Bucks now, Carter. Yeah, ball hair dude. He had plenty yeah. defense. Plenty D. It was him, and it was another name. His name was Jawan, like something. I forgot his name. He was solid. Was that the buff dude that played in the post on that yeah. West Virginia team? He didn't play in the post, but he was strong. He was a little oh. strong, a little defender too, man. Okay. <laughs> who else? Uh, who else, man? Man, man, we had some, man. Woo. Yeah. That was, was a, yeah. Yeah, that was straight. That was straight, that was huh? straight conference. TCU yeah. had a straight little team. They ain't really had no name players, but they was, you know what I'm saying? They was an underdog, so you know they was going to play hard every game. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. I think Big 12 was cracking. Yeah, that's good, man. I think, yeah, like I said before, though, I think you had a wonderful senior year, Iowa State. And uh, I want to get into y'all uh, tournament run, dude. Um, now, what what was y'all seed, y'all senior going into the uh, into the tournament? Because how do, how do that work, Corey? Because don't y'all, don't the coaches got to go to like a meeting? And uh, it's like a bid or something, or something happened where y'all get y'all seed for the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I don't think it's a. I don't know. I don't know. I think like the committee vote on the teams and stuff. I don't even know if the coaches really got nothing to do with the uh, like oh. the seeding and nothing like that. But I forgot. I think we might have been a like a seven. We was either a five, six, or seven seed. I might have been a seven seed if I'm not mistaken. We was pretty, we was, yeah, we might have been like a six or seven. That yeah. I'm not I'm thinking of. Do you do y'all feel like y'all was a seventh as a team? Like uh no, we definitely should have been higher because that year we led the country in three-point percentage. We led this country in attempts. We was like top five in scoring. Uh and so that says enough. And I think our record, I mean, we have, I don't think we had enough like big wins. That might have been what like what killed us or whatever the case may be. But we didn't have no bad losses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I think we probably we 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 felt like we probably should have been like a three, not even a three, maybe like a four or five. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Something yeah. a little higher, but a seven, that was a little too low for us for sure. Cause we was in the big 12, man. We was, I think we came like we was. Four for fifth out of the Big Twelve. That's one of the best conferences in the country. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, what were some of the big schools that y'all played? Like, not it, it not con- Well, I guess what what are the big schools y'all played? You know that big school you play, y'all beat them, y'all see yeah. go. <laughs> non conference. I don't even think we really had none. Like, we played. My senior year, oh, we played Cincinnati that year. They was ranked. They had, like, that dude Cashmere Wright, bro. They had a good team. I think we played – who else did we – because we played them in Vegas earlier that year. So, we lost. They was ranked that year. But we lost to them, bro. And I don't know. I don't think we played UNLV, but we might have beat them. I don't remember, but the teams in our conference, we had a bunch of ranked teams in our conference that year. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Kansas, we we played them tight the whole game. We actually went in overtime with them when we were supposed to beat them. The first time, the second time, they beat us by like I think six or something like that. We beat, we lost to them in overtime at their place. I think Texas might have been ranked that year. We beat them at home. We might have lost to them at their place. Uh, Oklahoma was probably ranked that year. I think we lost to them at their place, but we probably beat them at home. Oklahoma State was ranked that year. They had Marcus Smart. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot about that. They had Marcus Smart that year. I'll never forget, though. You know, at 2K used to have that one steal, bro, when you playing D and you just reach and they used to just let you take it. <laughs> I saw Marcus Smart take the ball from Will like that two times, bro. <laughs> And both times I'm like, bro, he just 2K steal your ass, bro. Every time, <laughs> bro, he just reaching, just taking the ball, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that, man, I ain't gonna lie. But yeah, we played like the teams in our conference was probably the most ranked teams we probably played that year. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. That was, yeah, like you said, that's one of the best conference in the country, bro. 
Big 12 always got some hard nosed, gritty, playing hard type of players and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so y'all get seven seed. And I know y'all made it to the third round, but I want to know who, who look, do, you we who, made it to the sec. We, we lost in the second round. Y'all lost in the second round? Yeah. Well, I thought y'all made it to the third and lost in the third. Mm-hmm. So who's the okay? Who y'all uh who the first game y'all uh beat? Played Notre Dame first. Ooh, that's a good one. It was like a four seed. That's what I'm saying. That's a good we one. Beat them by like 18. We beat the shit out of them. We smacked them, nigga. Smacked their ass, came out, we dubbed them down there, got them out the way, and we play Ohio State next. Is that with uh Kraft? Aaron Kraft? Ooh, they was tough. They was to the wire, bro. He hit that weak ass game winner on him. Yeah, he hit the game winner on y'all, K. Lou. Bro, dude. come on, man. This man shot twenty eight percent for from the for the year from three, like twenty eight percent. He hit a contested three over George over George Niang for game, bro. Okay, now let me ask you this: Killed my senior year, man, my whole college career. Oh, whoa. Ooh. Can I ask you this, Corey? No. So. Aaron Kraft killed your senior year, right? Mm-hmm. But you killed Grievous Vasquez senior year when he was at Maryland and you was at Michigan State. Drake, Karma, man. So you don't think, you know, <laughs> you know how the NCAA tournament is. Y'all boy, make big you know, shots. You know what they say about them tables, boy. We're motherfuckers always <laughs> turn, man. Yeah, damn yeah, man. It wasn't supposed to happen to me though. <laughs> hey man, hey, it was not supposed to happen to me. Hell yeah. no. Yeah, cause but man, cause it's like, and there's no knock to Aaron Kraft. You know, uh, it's crazy that you bring that <laughs> shot up because I actually forgot about that. But when we talk about the shot you made at Michigan State, Corey, bro, that's legendary, bro. Like. You know how many how many times have I called you during the NCAA tournament? I'm like, dude, they showed your clip, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, that's legendary, bro. So, man. granted, it happened to you, but just think of it this way: it ain't le- it ain't as legendary as mine. <laughs> just, <laughs> hey, that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. So y'all lose. So y'all lose. So y'all lose to. Uh, Ohio State, your senior year, I know you crushed because you just sat out a whole year. And after after that, after after your basketball season at Iowa State, what were you gearing yourself? What was you preparing yourself for, like, for the next step? NBA. Mm-hmm. NBA. And I go back to the tournament, bro. I'm so salty. I feel so bad, bro. And I have never done this before, dog. When we lost to Ohio State, I ain't shake not one person's hand. When he hit that shot, I walked straight to the locker room. You know I'm gonna find that clip. You ain't gonna be able to. He might be able to. Game winner. He might be able to. I ain't even shake hands. They celebrated woo this, bro. I hit. I went straight to the locker room. I feel so bad, and like after, I look back like, damn, that's bad sportsmanship, Corey. <laughs> Listen, we all we all human, and anybody anybody who penalizes you is definitely a hypocrite. No, no, if they play sports, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know how this go, man. Yeah, like, I'm thinking like, damn, this dog, my college career is really over, bro. When it hits you, it's like, damn, that shit really hit you. Like, damn, I didn't did so much, bro. Like, fuck, I went to two Final Fours, man. Or we had a chance that year too, because our bracket was so. If we would have beat them, our bracket we was going straight. I think that year we was actually gonna go play. The, we was gonna be playing in Milwaukee. The next round was in Milwaukee. Ohio State came to Milwaukee. The next round we was playing in Milwaukee, and that bracket was light. We was looking like, damn, oh, we can smack these teams. We can smack these teams. All we gotta do is get past Ohio State. Oh my God, the bracket was so sweet. I don't went to another Final Four probably. Wow. You remember like you remember so how far did Ohio State go that year? They might have lost in the Elite Eight. So the Elite oh, Eight. Do you I remember the remember. teams? You remember the teams? What you yeah. saying it being sweet? The teams. Man, it was, man. 
because uh, <laughs> it was a lot of upsets too that year too. So it was a lot of like low major teams, a couple like West Coast teams, maybe like bro, can't no ain't nobody can't nobody hold us, but our offense was crazy. But we putting up 80, 90, 100 points a game. Yeah. Everybody on the court could shoot a three. Everybody. We had the highest three point percentage and the most attempts. We shooting 30, 40 threes a game. For sure. Yeah, them man. NBA, we got an NBA coach, them NBA numbers for sure. Yeah. Uh, man, we was bro, we was geek. We was geek. And I was so geek. We was gonna come to the mill and play. But yeah, your question, man. Damn, bro. Just man, that didn't he killed my college career, man. That hurt. <laughs> Like, oh, it's yo, that would have been turned you playing in Milwaukee, bro. Now, let me ask you this now, we know you did, you know, he made the shot, messed up your senior year. But with if you would have made it to Milwaukee, right? Let's say y'all beat Ohio State. Now, you missed the McDonald's game that was in Milwaukee, and the being at the McDonald's game is such a like it's a big thing to do. Now, you think that you think you could have swept that under the rug just a little bit had you excuse me, you know, went to Milwaukee while playing for Iowa State? Nope. It don't amount up to it. No, it is not the same. No, because it just so happened that the tournament landed in Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> it just so happened that the tournament landed in Milwaukee. Once we had Milwaukee, ain't probably gonna get this. We probably gonna see another NCAA tournament here for another couple few years. That it, it happened before the McDonald's game, though. That will happen before the McDonald's game. That's but the true. McDonald's game coming to Milwaukee, yeah, that's true. Me not being a part of it and it coming to Milwaukee for me, nah, that's something I'll never forget. Okay, okay. My bad, cuz. My bad. I need they need to give me an apology plaque. <laughs> Wisconsin. You want to grant this to Corey Bushes? I'm gonna apologize. Yeah. For everything you did for you, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so that happens, K Lou. And your bas your basketball career for high, I mean college is is behind you now and now you're moving forward. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for an agent? Are you getting call-ups? Are you throw, did you throw your name in the draft? I, you know, I want to know these things, you know, like what did you do? Yeah, so pretty much like Fred pretty much hooked us up with a few agents, like the guys that were seniors, you know what I'm saying? Gave us a couple of options that he thought would be good fits for us and stuff like that. Unfortunately, like the one that, a couple of my other guys had signed with maybe because I don't know why it didn't work out for me. I had to end up going a different route, you know what I'm saying? Just choosing my own agent. So that's what it was. Then it was at that time, I'm a senior, my only other choice. I didn't even think about G League. I, I'm already then use, I'm already one year over in college anyway. I was supposed to graduate last year. I did the extra year of shit. I'm going, I'm trying to enter my name. I'm a senior, whatever. So I talked to my agent, you know what I'm saying? We enter our name. We He called some teams, gave me a few workouts, and shit, we going to prepare for that. Okay. So I know you go through these workouts with different NBA teams, and then um, the draft comes up, and you you don't even put your name in the draft, right, Kay? No, yeah. So my name is basically in the draft, like, so. Okay. So yeah. it's in the draft. You don't get drafted, right? Mm -hmm. But when you don't get drafted, then that's when you did the workouts? No, the workouts is before the draft. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. You know, I'll be having brain fart. So, okay, you go through that. And then the next step, I believe you play summer league, right? Yep. After the draft. The draft. Yep. After the draft. So I remember you playing. It was with Detroit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and I think you, I, I remember watching it and I think you played good, but how were you feeling around that time playing in the summer league? So it was cool, man. So I'm going to go back a little bit to the draft, like okay. even leading up to the draft, like, so I didn't really do a lot of workouts with a lot of teams. I think I probably had like six and a couple of them workouts was with the same teams. I did two with Detroit 
I did like two, maybe three with Phoenix. I did one with Milwaukee. I did one with Washington. Uh, I think I did one with Indiana. So I only had like six, seven workouts or whatever. But I did good enough in those. Like, so I wasn't projected high to be drafted anyway, coming out of college, whatever the case may be. That was cool. But, you know what I'm saying? I had a chance to get drafted. Phoenix and, Chicago, and Detroit had late picks in that draft. I think Detroit had the last pick. Phoenix might have had like 53, 52, something like that, whatever the case may be. So I did two workouts with Detroit. First one I killed, whatever. They asked me to come back for another one. Same thing with Phoenix, but I think I did three with Phoenix. So it was a good chance that I was about to get drafted by two of them teams, which is why they kept bringing me back. My agent hitting me like, man, they really like you. I'm cool with Joe Dumars already because his son is cool with Draymond. His son go to Michigan, but his son grew up with Draymond, like Joe Dumars' son uh, and a couple other people. They cool with Draymond. So Joe D, his son, used to always be at Michigan State. So I'm real cool with him. I'm real cool with Joe Dumars, who the case may be. So we had a little relationship. Not a real good one where I can, like, hit him up and see what's up. But, you know what I'm saying, he can, hey, what up? Because he used to come to Michigan State games, too. So I had a couple of workouts. They was interested. My agent hit me like, man, Joe D, they like you. You know what I'm saying? They got a late draft pick, but that year Peyton Siva came out. Granted, he did four years at Louisville, and they won a national championship that year. So we, I had a workout with Peyton. I killed him. I was killing him in Detroit. Killing him. I was looking for my phone. There you go. But I was killing him. So whatever the case may be, he told me that. He told me Phoenix. Phoenix like you too. DG was actually on Phoenix at the time. So I was actually, during the school year, I'm already done with school. I fly, I was already in Phoenix, you know what I'm saying, kicking it with DG. So during the time the pre-draft was day summer, I go in the gym, I got workouts with them. Matthew mm-hmm. Deladova, Shane Larkin, all of these guys in the workouts. Uh, Ian Clark was there. He played with well, the Warriors. He won a championship with them, whatever the case may be. We had a, had a workout with them. My agent hit me like, Phoenix, like you, bro. They got a light, they got a late pick. It might happen with this. I'm like, all right, bet, whatever. So, shit, workouts in, draft come. Maybe they got late picks, like you said. My agent ain't really telling me nothing during the draft who it is. But that 55th pick, bro, I'm thinking like, ooh, I'm finna go to Detroit. Or 58, how many picks in the draft? 60, I think? I, shit, I thought it was 55, but it might be 60. Yeah, I don't know. 50, I think. Whatever, case me. That last pick, they, I'm like, ooh, okay. They finna drive me, bro. They finna drive me. They take Peyton Siva. Granted, like I said, though, four years at Louisville, and he just won a national championship. I'm like, fuck. So anyway, summer league come. You know what I'm saying? Peyton playing. I'm playing on this is summer league. I'm playing with Andre Drummond get drafted that year. He on that team. Peyton on the team. KCP on the team. Kim English on the team, bro. Uh, Brandon Knight was on the team that year. I think it was might have been his second year, so he didn't really have to play. I think he played like one game. He, so the, we had some. It was, it was a straight team. Mm-hmm. It was a straight squad. But I, I felt like I played straight. I think I averaged like eight throughout them little couple games where I had a couple. Man, I wish I had them highlights, bro. I wish I had they they somewhere, huh? I, I think he's on YouTube, bro. I like, seen you. Like, yeah. I know you were dropping it off, bro. Like. Dropping them off, bro. I was hitting pull-up transition trays, bro. Good deal. I was, yeah, I, I, yeah, I did a great job, bro. Yeah. Oh, great job. I thought I was going to go to somebody training camp. That would have been dope. But it just sucks to know what you was going up against. You know, a four-year guy um, just won a national championship. And like it, it, it's very surprising for him to like get drafted like that late in the draft, you know. So it's a, I feel like it really sucked for you to like go up against that guy. Like, you know, I think it may have been one of them like, ah, dude, did stay there for four years. Yeah. Man, he won a national championship. Damn no it. No knock on him. Yeah, no knock on him. Yeah. yeah. But he was not fucking. Yeah. <laughs> it showed in the summer league. It showed though. It showed in the summer league. Mm. He was not fucking with me. 
Yeah, how was the uh now I know you um I know that you've been to like NCAA tournaments, you know, big huge stage, a lot of you know, crowd, you know, the atmosphere is atmosphere is different. How was the uh the uh, summer league atmosphere? Cause it's like a lot of people is trying to get on one team, you know, and uh do you kind of do you tend to lose focus? As a as a you know as a player, it's like I got to get my shit off. Like you know, like tell me, just tell me the atmosphere of playing in the summer league first. Tell me that, and then we can. Well, shit, we played that actually that year. We played in the Orlando one too, so that one was the one not in Vegas. It wasn't no fans there, so it was a it was the closed off one. Really, ain't nobody there but media and maybe a couple coaches. So the atmosphere was lame as hell. I ain't gonna lie. That shit was boring as hell, but actually playing against other, you know what I'm saying? Guys that have been in the NBA, like Reggie Jackson was playing with OKC. Dwight Bikes was Dwight was actually playing with OKC that year with Reggie. But you know, see guys that actually played a year in the league. Now they playing summer league and I get a chance to actually play against them. Not, you know what I'm saying? It, it was cool. That, that was that was pretty cool, but you know what I'm saying? It it was. I felt like, you know, not always, I, I supposed to be here. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've, I've always had that mentality or whatever the case may be, but I'm supposed to be here. So I don't need to come out here and do nothing that I need that I don't normally do. I'm going to come out here, play my game. I'm going to try to go get these little five, six assists in this little time I get real quick, maybe get like four, five, six points. And then, you know what I'm saying? Make it look real good, though. It's going to look good. It's going to look good. <laughs> yeah, for sure, dog. Yeah, and I ask that because, you know, we all human beings, Corey, and uh, I've been in situations before, fam, and, you know, of course not high as the NBA, but I've been in situations before where I'm like, bro, why am I coming off the bench for this dude? Like, and, and you know, not to be, like, all messy and shit, but, you know, I'm pretty sure for certain, like, some players, it's like, how the dude get drafted? And I know I'm better than him. You know what I'm saying? And I always ask people this, like, you think it was the politics course? A hundred percent. Even though it's the the late pick in the draft, bro, nobody really care about the last pick in the draft. You probably not, you know what I'm saying? You don't got a guaranteed contract. You mm -hmm. still got to make the team, whatever the case may be. But at the same time, like, hell yeah, it was politics. If you're going to go off talent, and, and who you feel is a better player, then hell yeah, why not pick me? I am better than him. I mm. showed you that in workouts. I showed you I'm better than that guy. Mm -hmm. Because he, maybe he came from Rick Pitino, they won a national championship that year, and he did all four years. And granted, mind you, bro, shit, I, this is, a, everybody, they ain't, motherfuckers ain't forgot about what happened at Michigan State. Motherfuckers don't care about that. Yeah, we're going to take the safe guy, man. This guy is forced. I mean, he's been here four years, won a national championship, stand-up guy. We ain't heard nothing bad about this man. Hell yeah, I'm going to take him over for this nigga. Man, who, man, dude just got kicked off of weed, bro. <laughs> 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 we ain't going to take him, man. We're going to take the chance with this guy real quick, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's real stuff, cuz. That's real stuff, Corey, bro. And that's, yeah, I guess that's just how, you know, that's how stuff go. And we all yeah, know. No, that's a fact. Yeah, it's that's life, how. man. It's life. I put myself in them situations. Mm hmm Yeah. You got to gotta roll with the punches, bro. <laughs> no, the real. But you got to roll with them. But it didn't, stop, it didn't stop the Corey Lucia show. So the NBA doesn't work for you. Mm hmm And then you land, you know, I'm not going to put no number to it, but you land this big contract your first year overseas in the top league. What's going? How you feeling at that time? You know, what I'm saying, cause we come from the inner city, you know, of Milwaukee. You know what I'm saying, and uh, we, you know, we seen both. Uh, you seen both of your parents working. You know what I'm saying, and now you land this big contract overseas, man. You know what's going through your head, like, oh man, I'm getting paid to who, man. First of all, I would I gotta tell this story because I tell my guys this story all the time. I think I probably didn't told you, man. I think 
One thing, first of all, I never really tried the the, the G League. I think I probably should have tried the G League after Summer League or something like that. But I was really trying to chase the money. So one thing I feel not messed up my chances to go to the NBA that year or ever was I saw Joe Dumars after Summer League in the airport. I was flying. I was on my way. I was going to fly back home from Orlando. So Joe Dumars asked me this question like, I came up to him. I seen him like, Joe D, what's good? I'm finna get out of here, going home with this. You know, chopped it up with him. But he asked me, like, so what you want to do? Like, I, what you want out of basketball? Like, what you trying to do? Like, do you want to make it to the NBA? Or do you want to? No, at first he was like, man, good summer league. You was balling with this, with that. I had to say that because he gave, gave me my props. And I wanted y'all to know he gave me my props. You feel me? <laughs> no, he was like, good summer league, man. You was balling. You did real good, man. I wouldn't be surprised if another team won't call you for summer league. I mean, for training camp. I'm like, shit, hell yeah, that'd be dope. But he was like, what you want out of basketball? Like, do you want, are you trying to end this to go to the NBA? Or are you trying to make money? Now, Q, tell me what would you say? How old were you? This is my first year. I was 21, 22. Oh, 21, 22? I'm going to say NBA. My good man, you know what I'm saying? Me coming from, you know, we come where we come from, bro. I'm, I'm trying to taste some bread, bro. Like, I'm hitting it. I'm playing basketball. I love basketball, but I'm in this to make some money. But me not thinking at this time what this man is asking me, bro, I should have told him both. I should have sat there and told this man both, like, hell yeah, nigga, my, my dream is to be in the NBA, and I want to make money doing it. Like, this is my dream to play in the NBA. Mm-hmm. My first, so my, the first thing that came out of my mouth was make money. Mm. He like, oh, you gonna, you gonna do that for sure. You ain't gonna have no problem making no money. You gonna do that for sure. Ever since then, I look back like, fuck. Like this, I should have told him, like, bro, yeah, I'm, I'm in this. I want to go to the NBA, bro. That's always been my dream. Yeah, that has always been my dream to make it to the NBA since I was a little boy. Why did I just tell this man I want to make money? Joe Dumar. <laughs> Joe <laughs> Dumar, yeah. bro. Wasn't thinking at the time, but now that I look back, bro, it's I, it's little subtle movements that I did, bro. We are gonna get into my, you know, what I'm saying my overseas career where I made a fuck up too. That you know, what I'm saying probably derailed where my career could have went too, but yeah, it's like little stuff like that, bro. And I never thought about it until I got older. Like, damn, I gave this man a wrong answer, bro. Yeah. I, now, now let me ask you this, Corey. Now, had you said that statement that you just said, do you think Joe Dumars would have pulled some strings for you? Man, maybe I probably would have been in in Detroit in, in training camp. I probably would have been in Detroit training, training camp going against Peyton and let me show y'all why I need his contract. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't give it to him and I'll show you why I should get it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. I without think, with, yeah, I think with you being that age, Corey, and you know, uh, J, you know, JD is an OG and older OGs say things like that to test the kid. Mm-hmm. And I think he was saying that to test you. And when you said money, I think for him, and I'm not, I don't know if I'm 100% correct, okay? I'm just going off if I ask a little kid that, you know, right. you know, I think you made it for him like, okay, he going to want to make money. Okay, well, he going to do that. Go do, your, go, go do your thing. But had you right. say, I want to play in the NBA, he going to be like, you know what? I'm going to help do, I'm going to help these young men out. So yeah, he really let you pick your fate, bro. That's a fact. Woo, that's deep, Corey. That don't mess with your head, like like for real. Like how how do it mess with your head, Corey? Because we are different humans and we handle things differently. But like mm-hmm. for me, like I, I man, it messed my head up. Like oh, I felt like if I would have told dude this, I could have touched the NBA. Like when I was still like hooping, hooping, like serious, like even like maybe like four years in my professional career, into my professional career, it used to, it used to eat at me like, damn, bro. Like I fucked up on that time. I right? when he asked me that question, it, I fucked up. I should have gave him the answer that I know I should have gave him, given him at the time, but I wasn't thinking. But now it's like, it is what it is. It, it is, is what it is. Yeah, man. you live and you learn, we all yeah. do. 
Okay. Can't cry over spoiled milk, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't drink uh, it either. Yeah, I don't want to really be sick. Guard. <laughs> no, but um, so you make the decision, like, man, ain't granny, you was young. I want the money, but you go overseas, top league. I get it. Playing a big contract. I get it. Yeah, how you feeling? Man, you you already know, like you said, bro, we come from the city. This is the most money I've ever seen in my life. Ever in my life. Ever the most money my mom has ever seen. My most money my pops has ever seen. Uh, well, back then, for my pops, because after a while, you know, my pops was a hustler, so he started getting it, not drugs. No, yeah. No. Long way now, nothing like that. He was a real cook. If y'all, if anybody watching this, y'all know my pops get it in in the kitchen. But none, none of us have ever seen that type of money, man. When I told them, I'm like, this is what I'm finna make. Like, and at the time, like rookies don't make that type of money, like usually. But of course, I came from Michigan State. I got a good background, and I just played summer league. So me playing summer league helped a lot. So I go play top league, and in, in Poland which is a respected league. I'm top league, first league. I start go over there and start do my thing and everything like that. But the money was straight, man. I did what I was supposed to do. I sent, you know what I'm saying? I I, I, I I took care of the family and that shit was going faster than I made it. <laughs> well, how long? Now, how fast? Well, let me ask you this. What was the first thing you bought? Uh, If I can recall, the first thing I did was send no, my own purchase for myself, I've never had a MacBook in my life. Okay. So MacBooks was the, I've always said like, damn, I want a MacBook. I don't care how much I'm paying for it. When I get my check, I'm paying that bitch. Yeah. I'm going to get it. So that was the first thing I bought. Overseas, it was a, a, a European style one too. Yeah. The, 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 the enter button looked real weird, but I went and got that. I ain't never had no MacBook. People probably, people probably look like, damn, folks ain't never had no MacBook. No, you couldn't have bought that shit. That was the first thing I went and bought myself. Yeah, that's dope, man. So, of course, you know we're going to get into basketball, but since you said the money got spent quick, what's quick, Corey? Because how long was the season? About six to eight months? Eight to, eight to ten? Eight to nine? No, no, so the season is supposed to be ten, but if you go in the playoffs, it's really like ten and a half, eleven. So we made it all the way to the playoffs. Where we, we lost in the game to go to the championship. In the, the, you know what I'm saying, the series to go to the championship. We took third that year. So I was there for about 11 months. So on top of me, granted, they played for, paid for my apartment and my, they gave me a car. I didn't have to pay that, but I did have to buy gas. Excuse me. They didn't pay for my food. I had to buy my own food. I still got to live. I still want to buy clothes. I still want to buy shoes. I'm sending money to the crib. I'm helping my brother. I'm helping my moms, my sister, my pops. I'm helping everybody. So by the time I got to the crib, after that 11 months, I ain't gonna say how much I had. I made I made a lot of money. It wasn't six figures, but it was close. But shit, I probably was down to like 10 by the time I came back, like 10, 15. And on top of that, the team had owed me like another 10. Uh, yep, they owed me another 10 because we went farther than we were supposed to in the playoffs and we the bonuses started stacking up. So they owed me another 10 Gs. So I came home with like 10 or 15 and the team owed me 10, which I didn't get for like another three years. But so, I, yeah, I had to go to court and everything for it. Yo, it took you three years to get $10,000. Is that how they operate overseas? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes I know guys that, man, man, be, might, man you might not might not get paid. And you might just be like, all right, fuck it, I'm going home. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's cutthroat me... over there, man. It's cutthroat. A lot of people okay. don't know that. Yeah, I want to talk. Let me talk about the basketball, but I do want to get back into that because that sounds interesting. For sure. Um, so, so you get there. I know you're starting on gate, right? You're starting on gate. How was the season for you? Like, was it was it a nice competitive league? Like, did you play against some guys that used to play in the NBA? Did you run into some guys that you played against in college or heard about? I played against Mike T. My first year, Mike T played on the, the team. They was like a Euro Cup team. So they was the top league. They was the top team in the league. Well, one of the top league teams in the league. But they was on like a Euro Cup, not Euro League, but Euro Cup. They still traveled and went to this. So I played against Mike T. 
uh, it was a good man. I ain't gonna lie, it was a competitive league, bro. It was it was competitive. It ain't Spain or Italy or France or nothing like that. But it was probably one of the top leagues up there, one of the top tougher leagues up there for sure. A lot of guys that I do know that do hoop have gone to that league since I've been there. So it's real, it's real competitive. It's real. Everybody knew it. It's knowledgeable. Everybody respected. So it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. And how was that? Uh, how was that about it when you ran into Mike T, man? Especially yeah. knowing like he went to Iowa State. I went to Iowa State. You know mm-hmm. how was how was that? Like, did y'all shake hands before the game or after the game? Oh man, of course, bro. We from the mill, bro. First of all, we two Milwaukee little little knuckleheads. And we playing against each other in Poland, but we all the way thousands of miles from each other. Of course, we're going to show love. I'm salty. I couldn't get up with him before before the, and after the game because we had get there before, like the night before. We ain't really got time to kick it. We'd go shoot around and we got to be in a hotel. And then after the game, we straight up out of there. So we ain't had time to really chill and talk and really, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, talk some shit to each other. But <laughs> on the court, it was cool. It was, it was all love before the game. But you know how Mike T is. You know how I am. We both competitors, but folks was picking me up. So Mike T didn't start. He didn't start for the team he played for. Like I said, he was playing for one of the top teams in, you know what I'm saying, that Euro Cup. So they had a good team. But when he came in, bro, I played a lot of minutes. I was really one of our only point guards. But when he played, bro, he picking. I'm already tired by the time he come in. Man, come on. Her dead ball, so he got time to come pick me up. He checking in, pulling his shorts up, bro, running all the way up to the court, running all up up to me. Bro. I'm like, come on, Mike, Mike, you already know, little bro. You know, little bro, you know how I get down. He picking me up 94 every time I pick up, get the ball. We end up losing that game, but I was fucking them up. Him too, him included. <laughs> him included. Oh, my God, I got that. I got that whole game on my computer. Send me that. <laughs> Gotcha. Oh, yeah, I was fucking them up. Yeah, you were. Uh, how much you wind up ending the game with, if you can uh, remember? I probably had like 25, maybe. Something yeah. like that. 25, like six, seven. It was yeah. something like. <laughs> what about Mike? You remember Mike's stats? Or? Uh, no, Mike probably had like nine, 10. Mike probably like 10 to 12, maybe. But like I said, Mike didn't start any. You know what I'm saying? His minutes was like spurtish. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And Mike, at that time, Mike wasn't really in score mode. That wasn't score mode, Mike. That was really like solid Mike. He's gonna come in, do his job, play good defense, knock down the open shot when it's there. But he ain't really like out there in aggressive kill mode. Yeah, I love that Mike though. <laughs> that was the DG League early NBA, Mike. <laughs> yeah, on the real. So yeah, man, that that's that's dope. So overall, you did enjoy the league. It was competitive. You got paid good. Um, and I'm actually glad that you brought up uh, the money part, man, because, you know, um, I feel like you should never get penalized, you know, being uh, 21, you know, with that amount of money. Man, I remember getting my my uh, financial aid checks, you know, back in, when I was in college, which was like five G's and that was oh. like, <laughs> It was gone by the time I came home. You know what I'm saying? So um, I feel like you should never get penalized, you know, especially helping family, you know, your brother, your mom, your sister, uh, pops and stuff. But um, so um, y'all fell short in the playoffs. Because I know you played for a lot of teams overseas. So you just, you got to do, of course, I know you're going to help me out. So you come home for the summer. Um, do you not get a call up again from that Poland team or you go a different direction? Yeah, so that, that okay, yeah, this, this is where I'm happy we finna get into it. So even halfway through that Poland year, like they tried to send me home. Like at the beginning of the year, like halfway through the year, not even halfway, we were close to halfway, but we were losing. Like we were like, record wasn't good. We wasn't like a bad record. I think we was like 500 though. We was mm-hmm. even, whatever the case may be, but I'm playing good. I'm a rookie, bro. I'm averaging like 12, probably like, yeah, five assists, six assists, yeah, maybe four. We'll say that maybe four or five assists, like 12 and four and five are solid for me. I feel like that's what I'm doing what they asked me to do. So, 
it was at one time my cousin Elijah Johnson actually he's actually my cousin whatever but he played at Kansas when we was talking about against the Kansas game he played he came to our team so when he came the team low-key tried to send me home but Elijah got hurt so they came to me one day we was playing we had we had just lost but they came to me like you got they basically said this you got three games to give us a reason not to send you home. Not in those words, but like you got three, my three, my agent told me like you got three games to basically show them, you know what I'm saying, not to send you home. At that time, bro, I was probably scoring like eh, 12, 14, 15 points. The next three games, I had 21. No, I had 27, I had 22, and I had 28. I went crazy, cause I had no choice. Elijah was out. And I ain't had no choice but to just go crazy. They kept me on the team, like, all right, we're not gonna send you home. So they just kept me and Elijah and ended up sending somebody else to the crib. That's how cutthroat being overseas is, bro. You could be playing solid and they'll still try to send you home if you're an American. So I just said, all right, fuck it. I'm gonna just put this motherfucker up. Uh, uh, we were still losing. We lost like two of those three games. We won one. But they couldn't send me to the crib because I had, I had 27, 21, and 28. Like, you can't do nothing after that. You How you going to send me home? Yeah, exactly. But, wow. So, and I'm glad you're touching on this, dude, because a lot of people, you know, be want to go overseas. And a lot of people decline from going overseas because of these type of stories, dude. And um, not to mention, man, some of these laws are different, man. Like, I hope none of y'all are stealing, but I know some of these countries uh, cut your hand off if you're stealing. Around, be walking around like this. Yeah, put you in jail if you're talking to that women. So y'all got to be careful. And then just to hear the cutthroat side, you know, um, you know, like like you said, playing solid, man, 12 points, four, five assists. And we giving you three games, man, and – if you don't do nothing, we send you home. And like, that's some deep shit to be going through, bro. Like, we not in Florida, bro, where the flight about to be three and a half, four and a, you know, no. four away, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is about to be 12, 14 hour flight, bro. So y'all need to stop playing. <laughs> Facts. Yeah, yeah. So you leave. So after that season, you don't even, you don't go back to Poland. You take a different direction. Yeah, so they basically told me, like, we can't afford you because, this, is, like I said, this is the first year they've made the play – not the playoffs, but they barely make the playoffs. They were not expecting to go as far as we did. We went to – we made it to the third place, and they seen, like, what I was capable of pretty much after they threatened to send me home. So they, like, we ain't going to even – they didn't offer me. I didn't even offer me. They, like, all right, we ain't going to be able to pay you whatever you are, you support. We feel like you deserve after this. So they didn't offer me. My agent at the time – and this is where my career might have taken a change. I'm glad this is where I want to touch base on. So my agent at the time, man, he came to me like, all right, this is probably my best. This, is, this wasn't my best deal yet. But the first deal he came with me with was to go to Greece. Top league. We was going to be playing against Euro League teams. It was like three year league teams in that Greece, that Greece league. Mm -hmm. Told me, like, I'm gonna just tell y'all the number, like, it's for 50,000. So 50,000 for 10 months. So 5,000 a month, pretty much. So they all could do the math for me to turn that down to imagine how much my first contract was where I'm not taking 50,000. So y'all know my, my first contract was way more than that. So me, I just took this team to third place. I'm playing top league polo. I just took this team to third place. They've never done that. I was balling. Like after they tried to send me home, I ended up averaging like 15, 17 points a game, like six assists. I'm balling. I tell my agent like, damn, bro, like 50,000? I just made more than that, bro. Like my rookie year, like my first year out, I made way more than 50,000, bro. I'm not, no, I'm not taking that. I'm not, I'm sorry. Keep looking. That's where I fucked up. One of them Joe Dumar situations. Me not fucking realizing that the money wasn't the problem. Like the money, fuck the money, Corey, because it's, it's valid money. It's straight money. It's tax-free. It's $50,000, $5,000 a month. You're straight. And, and with bonuses, we probably can get you more. Fine. I should have thought about this, but I wasn't. 
It's top league Greece, and you're going to play against three Euro League teams. It's not about the money. It's about where you're going, who you finna be playing against, who you finna be playing in front of, the situation you're finna have. Bro, you're in a Greece. You're in Greece. I turned it down. I tell them, no, I don't want it. Go find me something else. I, I, I should be getting more money than $50,000 for the play for, the, for whoever I'm finna go play for. Turn it down, I end up going to Hungary. Contract was solid. It wasn't as much. It was probably like the same that I was finna get in Greece, maybe a little more. I think it was like 10 Gs, more by like 60. So I go. Situation terrible. It's horrible. Terrible, Q. First of all, I get there. My apartment, I got my own apartment, of course. I ain't got my car yet, whatever. That's cool. I'm going to get mm -hmm. it like in a couple of days. My apartment that I moved in, it was like they whoever lived in before me, they said, hey, we got somebody moving in here. Get up. Get the fuck out. Y'all got to go. Y'all got to go, bro. It's, it's, it's shampoo bottles in the shower, soap, dishes in the sink. Like the rooms look like the kids like left the beds messed up and shit, bro. So I'm like, all right, hold on now. Call the team, whatever. I call my agent like, bro. What is, bro, the room looked like, the apartment looked like they just shut, like kicked somebody out, bro. Like, what the fuck is going on? So I get there early, mind you. Training camp don't start for like another week. Like, I'm there early. Like, ain't nobody really there. No other Americans. I don't live with the other teammates. Nobody speaks English. So they just dropped me off at the apartment, bro. Like, all right, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll do this, we'll do that. I'm like, all right, bet. So I don't really... Bro, my internet stuff work. I don't really have, I don't know. I don't know where I'm at, bro. I'm in Hungary. So fuck it. I'm like, all right, bet. I'll just go walk, find something to eat, whatever the case may be. Next day come, bro. I'm telling them like, bro, I got to get me out this apartment. Like, I can't live here. Or I need something cleaner. I need something better than this. Like, do something. <laughs> bro, man, they basically just ignored me, dog. I'm there for like two weeks, bro. I tell my agent like, bro, I'm going home. I'm ready to go. I play like maybe a preseason game. Camp started in a week. Then we play a preseason game, whatever the case may be. I'm still in the same apartment. They clean it up a little bit, but it's still nasty. It's still oh, bro. I'm not comfortable. I'm like, bro, I'm ready to go home. I gotta go home. They're like, man, you can't give it. I'm like, no, bro. Nobody is talking to me, bro. They, I don't know. No, I'm walking to get food. Like nobody's helping me do nothing. My agent taking too long, bro. I call my pops. My pops give me a flight to the crib, bro. I leave. I'm gone. I leave, bro. I can't deal with it. So, yeah. So, when you leave, K. Lou, do you fire your agent and get a new one? So, once you fire your agent and get a new one, how was your direction for basketball going for you? Would you, like, getting better contracts? Were you, like, being happy as a player? So I ain't gonna lie, after that time, deal start, started to slow down. But at the same time, this is only like my second year out. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't really know the speed of how deals were supposed to come anyway, because like I just played summer league, the deal came right away after my first year out. The next year, I'm with the same agent, the deals was coming because I just literally played. But I fire him. I pick up a new agent. The new agent wasn't shit. Wasn't shit, man. Wasn't shit. I think I went to a team late that year. I didn't even start the year that year. I went to a team late. I didn't play that whole year after I left Hungary. Wait, no, I did. Yeah, I did. I fired him and this next agent. It took a few months, but I don't think I went. I went to Cyprus that same season. No problem. And I played there. I think I went there in like January with a different agent, whatever the case may be. So I play there, I go there. Excuse me. I finish, I play there for like three months. At the end of the season, they send me home. Mind you, another one of the situations. I'm out there balling, Mero. I don't know. I think the coach just didn't like me, bro. I think they, it's one of them situations where one of the, 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 the other point guard was older, but he's from there. He's been there. He's been playing there for years. They end up sending me to the crib. But 
I get paid for those little few months and I end up coming home. I'm with the same agent. Nothing comes for like a year. I don't think, maybe not even a year. I think hmm, like half a season, like half a year. So that happens. Like 2014. I think I don't get my next deal until 2015. So that time you at the crib, Corey. Now I'm already knowing you working now. Where, how, how focused are you? Are you starting to get like, well, the, well, before I ask that, Corey, I'm sorry. So you not getting, you know, them deals right away. It ain't you not in your head thinking like, well, I at least want to try to go back to the the was it the D League or the G League then? I think it was still the D League. The D League. I think it was still called the D League. That's not crossing your head while you like back at home. Once or twice, but I said, was this when? I think this when I had to do key. I think once, maybe once or twice, but I never went like pursued it like I should have I didn't go to no workouts or nothing like that I probably just told the dude who was my agent at the time and like yeah I did actually I told him just enter my name in the draft like like see if I can get drafted which ha he did I never I didn't get drafted okay so I did enter my name in the draft in the G League draft I think maybe twice I can't remember but that I think 2015 I did it for the first time and I didn't get drafted okay mm -hmm. now is this is the is the D League? Is it kind of similar to the NBA where you don't get drafted, but can you still work out for the D League teams? Yeah. Okay. And you do no workouts or anything, or no, nah, I ain't do no workouts. Oh no, nah. no, because they usually have like open trials and stuff like that before they do the draft for people like local people. I wasn't trying to do those. Yeah, I ain't really I didn't inquire about no private workouts or nothing like that, which I probably should have done. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you so you sit out for that chunk of time, and I think you said 2015 is like yeah call up. So do you fire this agent again, or are you still rocking with the same one? So at this time, I think I'm still rocking with the same guy. Nope, I fire him. Okay, I fire him. Now I'm just on my own. So 2015 is when I I, I don't have an agent. I have had an, I ain't had an agent since 2015, pretty much. So in 2015, I get a call from it might have been one of my guys who might have known somebody, and he put me in touch with this agent who was looking for a point guard in Macedonia. So I go to Macedonia and I play. Granted, that situation was terrible. I signed to go play for like, yeah, for like 50. So it's still been straight five G's a month. It was straight. After me not playing for a year, I'm like, hell yeah, I'll take that. Let's go. So I, I sign it. I go there for a month. I'm killing. Another situation. This team, this team was in Euro Cup. So I would have been traveling, playing against other teams in different countries. Like it would have been one of those situations. We were straight. They had another older point guard. He was there for years, bro. So he was well known. Bro, I'll be having the wet, worst look, bro. I feel like, and a lot of people will probably look like, damn, you ever thought it was you? What you didn't do? Like, <laughs> yeah. but bro, I, I'm, oh my God, bro. I'm killing. And I still, I got the highlights for this game. We can go look on YouTube for this game. And I was playing, we was playing a team in Russia. I'm killing. I'm I'm balling. The coach don't like me, bro. They they tell my agent. We play a few games. So we from we playing in Macedonia. We drive to there's another we drive to Serbia, which is close. We play a tournament there. We play against a couple teams out there, bro. It was straight. I'm balling. He calling my agent. My agent can't see our games. He calling my agent like, man, he's not playing good. He's playing lazy. Like he's out of shape. Like he's not scoring the ball. My agent called me like, bro, like this. No, he's not my agent at the time. He's just the guy that got me this job. Like yeah, the guy yeah. that reached out to me, but he's not my agent. So I'm like, bro, huh? Like, bro, I just had 15. I had 15 in like 10 minutes. How is he telling you I didn't score? What is he talking about? He go check the stats like, oh, okay. Yeah, I see you did have this and that. Like, 
why is he telling me this? Like, you're not playing hard. I'm like, bro, I don't know. I'm you got the stats, bro. I'm balling, bro. What is he talking about, bro? So it was one of those situations. I think I, re- I honestly just don't think the coach liked my swag, bro. Cause I was in there. I had the younger guy because we had we would practice right after the younger team. And we had a couple of the younger players on our team. Everybody, I've got one of the personalities where everybody just gravitate to me, bro. Everybody just talking to me, bro. He comes in the gym, he won't say hi to me. He say hi to everybody else. Won't say hi to me. Won't nothing. He won't say not a word to me, dog. He had somebody else come talk to me. So they sent me home, bro. They end up sending me home. Wow. They end up sending me home. Crazy. Yeah, so that, I'm kind of lost for words right now. I ain't gonna... <laughs> Send me to the crib after a month and don't pay me. Like, you know, contracts supposed to be guaranteed. Don't pay me. Don't pay me for the month I was there. Don't pay me my contract. Nothing. Just send me to the crib. Bought my flight and sent me home. Swear. Wow. Swear. Okay. Swear. I, 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 after like a year or two after, I was still trying to get that bread. I never seen it. That's like five G's I could have had for that little month, cuz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm ask you about it. I ain't gonna press you. I ain't gonna take you to court, but man, what's up with it, bro? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, let me get that little five, man. Get that little five, bro. In the real. So let me ask you this, though, Corey. Now, you you stated that two, two coaches or yeah, two coaches, two different teams didn't like you. As human beings, ha- did you look in the mirror and say, damn, what the fuck am I doing wrong? Is it me? Is it really me? Or are you just, this the politic part? This hometown kid, he been here for this long time, a boom, boom. Not I ain't even, I, man, of course, man, anybody, man, man, I, uh, anybody who wouldn't look in the mirror and be like, damn, what the fuck am I doing wrong? They just naive, bro. Yeah. They, man, oblivion to, I don't know, life itself, I guess. Man, because hell yeah, I'm looking like shit, bro. This this is a continuous thing. Like, this is not the first time a team tried to send me home, bro. So I'm like, fuck, what is it? Like, bro, is it my high play, bro? Like, I know I'm not a bad person. I'm not coming in here with an attitude, bro. I'm, I'm, I laugh. I talk to everybody. So they can't say it's my personality. My personality. I don't know what it is. Maybe, maybe they just don't like the way I play. I don't know. I don't know. That's what me, like, I've always told myself, like, I don't have a, I've never, I've never had a game for college. Like, my game only resulted to college because I played in the system and, and Fred made it available to where I can play pick, pick and roll. Overseas is not for me either. I've yeah. always felt that I've had an NBA game. Just yeah. the way I play, like the, like the creativity I play with, the looseness I play with. Like, I'm not overseas. Like, they want you to be like, ah, run through the wall play hard, run him over, like that type of style. And that's not me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what it was, but I, hell yeah, I looked in the mirror a few times, like, bro, what the fuck am I doing wrong? Yeah. I know I'm not bad. I know I can hoop. I'm cold. Yeah. But what else is it, bro? Yeah. That hey. shit was tough. Hey, that er, damn, maybe, hey, you know, I ain't play overseas. Maybe that was my type of game. Oh, bro, you would have, yeah, for real, you would have been good overseas. Straight up. Wow. Okay. That makes a lot of sense, Corey, because, you know, I always hear different stories of, you know, people overseas experience. And uh, this is the first time that I'm just getting into like, just like the uncut, the real, you know what I'm saying? From somebody that I'm really close to, you know what I'm saying? So to hear from you, it's like, I see why a lot of people come home. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So it's no knock to nobody you know, getting, sitting home, especially being a fucking country dog that, you know, they don't speak English, bro. You know, that shit gotta be some scary shit, man. And you know? I did miss, I ain't gonna lie. I did, I said, I set out the rest of the year. I forgot I did play in Canada uh, like that year when I didn't, but that was all off no age in 2014. I did go to Canada that year, I forgot. No, oh, like 13 or something like that, one of them years. Mm-hmm. Now that year, if I'm mistaken, I think it 2016, 2017, maybe, I don't know. Remember the year you sent me the link and you played against uh, Leandro, what is it, Leandro Barbosa? Yeah, that was in, that's when I was in Brazil. That was like 2019. 2019, God, see, look, you've been a pro for so long, dog. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, yeah. So I want to finish to continue. And and like I said, we it's up to you. We don't got to touch on every, you know, team you've been on, but um when when did you start noticing though, like, okay, like this is how you know this shit should be for me, you know, with the basketball shit, or you always felt like I'm gonna just stay over here who get some money, you know what I'm saying? Like how did like how did it start going for you after that, you know, just have an agent firing them and representing yourself and then, you know, moving forward. Like how was it moving forward with you uh representing your own self? Tough. I ain't gonna lie. It was tough. Now, I look back, I wish I would have never fired my first agent. Cause even you know, even though that at the time I thought that deal was some bullshit, it was not. That was probably one of the best. That was the best deal I probably should. I ended up did getting. That was the best deal I getting. I was gonna get. So me, man, I should have kept him. But me moving forward, bro, it was tough. Deal start not to come, and if they did come, the money wasn't really good. And then if they did come, it was sparingly, bro. I might have got a deal once, or a, or a maybe once every like month every other month or something bro it was tough like 2016 i got lucky to be honest like did i i got lucky in 2016 and ended up going to china with no agent like china is a hard place to get to i got lucky to go to china then that summer um i think i went early may to like june june may june no March, April, March, April. I think I went in April. I went early April and I played to late June off some humbug, bro. Honestly, this one of my guys that worked with the Pistons at the time, but he's not he's an agent now. He's actually worked with Draymond Agency. Yeah, I'm just real cool with him. He was like, he hit me like, man, I'm looking, I'll put your name in some stuff for you, man. So hopefully somebody to reach out. He got a call from this agent, this at China team. He he had used my old film from 2013 when I played summer league with the Pistons. So they thought it was fresh. So they like, oh shit, hell yeah, we want him to come on here. But I was like a sub player because they it was another. You remember Darius Washington played against Sebastian Telfair a long time ago in that one game in high school it was on ESPN. What do no that that name sound familiar? Darius. Oh. Washington. Cold, it was cold, but anyway, he was playing in like Turkey at the time. But they had signed him, but he was in the playoffs, so they needed like another point guard. So he like, man, they seen your summer league, they want you to come. I'm like, bet, biggest bag I ever caught, two months, sixty bands. I'm like, bet, I'm gone. What? Two months, sixty G's. I went, I'm gone. I'm like, hell yeah, nigga. I ain't got no agent. I'm not. I man, I, man. Deals has been coming scarce. I oh hell yeah, let's do it. So I go over there, I kill. This is the first time I felt free overseas playing basketball ever in life, bro. Mm -hmm. Ever I felt so good playing over there. They didn't speak English. I had a translator that barely spoke English, and that I played with Earl Clark. Earl Clark went to Louisville, played in the league, played with Kobe, played with the Lakers, played with a few teams, but it was me and him. Bro, probably one of the best experiences I've ever had playing overseas. Playing in China is tough now. The living and everything like that, if you're not American, is tough. They live hard. But, but you know what I'm saying? We lived in a hotel. But playing-wise, I average like 24, like eight assists. Playing all game, bro. Coach, like, is giving me the ball. Like, get a ball to Lou. Give it to Earl. Give it to Lou. Give it to Earl. I'm balling. That Ooh. was the most fun I ever had playing basketball. Probably ever, ever, over college, over AAU. No, okay, I take it. Nah, AAU was cracking. That shit was fun. Yeah, but as a professional, that was yeah. that was the most fun I ever had, bro. And that yeah. led up to me getting the summer league uh, opportunity with the Golden State that that summer. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, and I was going to touch on that, Corey. And, uh, well, first of all, I'm glad you enjoyed the China. You know, shout out to my, my boy K. Lou, dog, for real. Like, going overseas, I hope you all paying attention. Going overseas, no agent, representing itself, and cost 60000 in two months. So, y'all can do things on your own. If y'all stay focused, stay prayed up, y'all can get it. 
So I was going actually actually about the uh, the summer league because I remember that you uh, you played for is it the Santa Cruz. It's like the Warriors. Is no, it- the Warriors summer league fool. Oh, the war. That's the Santa Cruz is they G League team. G League, my bad. Yeah. So you play for Warriors Summer League 2016. Mm-hmm. Now, we all know, and for those who don't know, Corey and Draymond are very, very tight. They are still friends uh, to this day. And oh yeah, well, did, did you, did Draymond have something to do with that? Or did you continue to represent yourself to make that play? I'm assuming he had something to do with it. Because okay. it was it was it was real random. I had actually I had missed a training camp and everything because you know before summer league they do like a three day practice camp and everything like that. But I had literally just got back from China. I actually flew to Iowa to go see my son because my son was born when I was in China. Like I missed the birth and everything, so he was probably like a month old by the time I got back. So I flew straight to Iowa, not even come back to Milwaukee to go see him. But Draymond actually called me. They they called me like a day after I got there. Like, bro, like you trying to play summer league? I'm like, shit, with y'all? He's like, yeah, nigga. I'm like, nigga, hell yeah, I'm trying to play. What you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to play. What's good? I just got back though. Like, I just got back from China. He like, yeah, I know. I'm assuming they probably seen me hoop or whatever the case may be, some film or something. He like, nigga, I know. You know what I'm saying? I seen you over there. You trying to play? I'm like, yeah. He like, all right, well. They already had their practice uh, out here in San in, in Sandy in San Francisco. I mean, in Oakland, but they fly to Vegas like tomorrow, so they get your flight and everything right now. Like, is you trying to do it? I'm like, damn, bro, I just got, the, I just met my son, bro. Like today, you asking me to leave tomorrow? I'm like, I asked my my son's mom, like, shit, what you think? She's like, yeah, you can go, go. I feel like you should go. I'm like, all right, bet. Right, we're not at. I don't even need to speak about that. But. Yeah. <laughs> she like, yeah, go. I'm like, all right, bet. Hey, tell them, yeah, I'm down, whatever. So they get the flight. Ooh, this, ooh, that. I mean, like I said, I missed the whole practice thing and everything like that. So it was really like, to be honest, bro, it was kind of like I really didn't even have to go, bro, because I barely played. I didn't even play. Like, I got in the last game of summer league. I probably played a few minutes in between – you know what I'm saying? When we did play a regular game, but I barely played, bro. It was like I shouldn't even have went. I don't, I don't know, Corey. I mean, I get where you coming from because you you know, you you haven't met your son yet like that. And you just flew from China and then Iowa State to Vegas. Yeah. But you do got a, a legendary like crossover in that game. Got, <laughs> that one game I played in. I got some clips now. That's what I'm saying. Got so, some clips. <laughs> go to YouTube. You type in like top crossovers ever, and like that is in rotation with the shit that was going on in the NBA. So I just wanted to throw that out there, dog. You know, got what I'm some saying? clips now. I yeah. got some clips. No, that's a fact. Mm-hmm. So, so you go through all this stuff with the uh, with the summer league. The overseas stuff, um, and after after you do the summer league with the Golden State Warriors, you go back overseas, correct? Because you you didn't end you didn't stop playing ball until twenty nineteen, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, by yeah. twenty nineteen. So I yeah. wanted to fast forward just a, just a little bit. So uh, after the Warriors thing, and you had. Uh, you had your three year, your three year run, you know, left in the tank. I don't know, you know, what you was going through or how you was feeling at the time. But in the, the next three years, like, like, what was going on for you? Were you thinking in your head, like, man, I know damn well I ain't about to retire, mm-hmm. and then and then you 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 bring up your uh, your son, you know, shout out to my nephew Cash. Are you? The next three years, Corey, are you thinking like it's time for retirement? To like, you know, it's time for me to be a father. Like, what's going through your head in that three years? Because you ended at twenty nineteen and you was pretty young, bro. Yeah. So, shit. At the time, like I said, like you said, I ain't had no age in that or nothing like that. My son was born. I'm I'm like twenty seven at the time, almost about to be twenty eight. So, 
excuse me, hell no. Retirement wasn't on my mind. Like even to this, I still don't fucking want to be done hooping, but retirement was not in my mind at all. Like hell no, I'm not giving up basketball. I know I still can go. I got plenty in the tank. I'm still cold, but also at the same time, the deals, like my career hasn't been going like as I planned it to, like as I thought it should be going. My career has taken a whole left turn. Like my career, I thought my career was gonna go this, 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 do this straight arrow. That motherfucker went, boop, went that way. Deals weren't coming. When I did get the deals, money wasn't where I wanted to do. So I had to turn a lot. I turned, granted, like a lot of that time that I wasn't playing, I turned many deals down. But the money just wasn't there. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not, not going over there for ten months for something that I feel like I can make here in in the states. Like I'm sorry, I love basketball, I do, but I'm not going that far away for my son when I just had my son, and when I at the, one of the times when I knew my son was coming. Like I'm not going that far away for for, for crumbs. I can't do it. Yeah. Oh, my thought after, especially after summer league was, all right, bet. I still want to hoop. The overseas deal is not really coming. Let's try the D league again. So I did enter my name and I was talking to Draymond and with Santa Cruz, like, and this is, man, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. So I'm talking to Draymond. I just played with him. I'm like, dog, I'm trying to play with the G league team. What up? So she, yeah, actually get me in touch with a GM. They GM is actually the Warriors GM son. So I'm texting with the GM, like, you know what I'm saying? I want, can I put, if I put my name in, y'all gonna draft me. I'm talking to him. This man tell me, yes, we're gonna take you. We'll draft you. We're gonna draft you this. Uh, all you gotta do is enter your name. You don't have to come work out. None, none of that. Just let me, let me do the logistics. Well, this, we'll get back to you and then you will be drafted. You're gonna, we're gonna draft you. I'm like, all right, bet. So I ain't gotta go overseas. I know this is gonna happen. Draft come, they don't draft me. Mm. I, I, he like, oh man, we just needed to do something else, so we weren't able to take you. This, I'm like, all right, whatever. So at the same, I'm 28, 20, I'm, I'm 28 now. I'm like, all right, shit, I don't know what's gonna happen. I, I really don't. I want to hoop, but I, and it's a chance I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I, I probably won't. I'm not going to take nothing. I'm not taking no bullshit deals again. So I don't. Time go by. Uh, I don't remember how the Brazil thing came along. But 2017, because I played two years in Brazil. 2017 come. I'm not on. I'm not playing or nothing like that. 2017 come. I get Bree. My cousin Bree, if you, I'm sure everybody watching this, everybody know him. Rakeese Perrine played overseas or whatever. He called me like, man, I got this age. And in Brazil, like, I'm not going because I think he was going to France or something at the time. He like, bro, but you know what I'm saying? You can talk to him. Hopefully he'll get you something. So I talked to the dude. It's an agent in Brazil. He like, all right. They got this summer thing, this summer little time where they got this league where you can come play and they'll pay you with this same thing. It's pretty much the same league. It's a league, but they just do it in the summer. I'm like, all right. So if I leave, I would have to leave in like, I think I left in like April and I was there to like August. I'm like, all right, bet I'll do it. But at the time, like I said, the money wasn't, I'm doing everything on my own. Money ain't as like how I was usually making. It wasn't, I wasn't what I was used to. So I took a pay cut. I think I was making, instead of like five, six, seven Gs a month, I was making like 35 or four. I took a pay cut or whatever. So I'm like, fuck it. I haven't hooped in a while, bro. I need to go hoop. I need somebody to see some footage so I can go hoop. So I took the, I just took the job. I go out there. I play good. They asked me to come back for their regular season. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, bet. I do that. This is 2017 going to 2019. So I play that year. I played good in between that, between that summer league and then the league where they come back and they got their regular season. Should I go home for, I come back home to Milwaukee for like a month, fly right back out. Like, all right, fuck it. I gotta go back to Brazil. Flew right back to Brazil, played that year. They wanted me to come back. 
they gave me a little more money. Like, all right, just come play because they were moving up in the league. I played, and, and mind you, as I took a pay cut, they were in a second league in Brazil. I've never played in a second league anywhere in my life. So, shit, at this point, I'm just like, man, I'm just trying to hoop, bro. I got to get back somewhere. I'm going to take summer league. I'm going to take a pay cut. The second league, I'm going to take a pay cut. Let's do it. So I ball. The team get – we do good. They get bumped up to the first league. This is 2019 year. No, this is 2018 leading into 2019. COVID year, though. No, 2019 leading into 28, 2020 COVID year. So, shit. Another one of those situations, bro, they bring in a new coach. I'm on this team for two of the last two years, whatever the case may be, man. This coach bring in another point guard from Argentina. Brazil and Argentina, bro, they, they, they one of a kind. They stick with each other. They love each other, whatever the case. They already saying Cam Tatum. I played with Cameron Tatum. If y'all don't remember him, he played at Tennessee. I actually played against him in a tournament. That same year I hit that shot, he played with Tennessee. And they went to the tournament. We beat them in like the Elite Eight. But anyway, he played on that team with me. They already sent him home because a new coach come, whatever. They sent him home. So I'm there by myself. Argentina point guard come, bro. I got the clip of this year. That same season, I started off the year averaging 19 points in three games. First game, I had 19. Second game, I had like 17. Third game, I had 27. 20, I'm averaging like 19 and like five, maybe. The coach come up with some bullshit. He have a meeting with me, man. He talking about the team feel like they don't like all I care about is my playing time. I'm not a team player. Everybody's not comfortable. So I asked the team like we're in a meeting together. I asked the team like, hey, man, does anybody feel this way? Do anybody not like 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 my personality feel like I'm in here for myself? Don't care about winning or nothing like that. Everybody's shaking their head like, no, man, no, no, man. We, we're good. We're good. We're good. Who this? Who that? All right, the meeting over. They end up calling my agent, the dude who I was working with in Brazil. He like, yeah, we not gonna, we don't want to keep Corey no more. Cause uh, actually, I'm not. An incident did happen with a fan in the in the crowd while we were playing a game. I didn't argue with him nothing like that, but he's shouting shit, woo this, woo that, and I'm just looking, like, all right, whatever, laughing at him and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Talking crazy, whatever the case may be. So they bring that up, like, oh, he's arguing with fans. Nobody likes him on the team. Woo this, woo that. So they end up sending me to the crib. After playing there for two years, they end up sending me to the crib. Granted, it was right before COVID. Like, I came home in December. COVID happened in March or that uh, year, 2020. But mm -hmm. I could have been there for a few more months. But they ended up sending me to the crib, and I ain't played basketball since then, bro. Yeah, yeah. And they paid you They paid you all your money for that, right? Not the rest of the season. They gave me, like, the money up until then and then for that month where I left. Oh, got you, got you. Yeah. Okay. But, so... Man. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. December 2019, that's, it's going on, what, we feel, it's going on four years, man. Four years. It'll you, be you January 2023. I, I ain't played in overseas and no type of nothing, organized basketball, man, doing something that I love to do growing up doing in four years, bro. Yeah. So they pretty much forced me to retire. Like, after that, I was kind of like, shit, man, I got two kids now. Like, my daughter's three. I got two kids. I'm not, for one, I'm not going overseas now if it's not worth it. If somebody not offering me seven, eight thousand dollars a month, yeah, yeah. I am not going overseas yeah. now. I'm sorry, I can't do it. I can't. I can't leave my kids. But yeah, I yeah. go play in the G League and the D League and stuff like that. I just, man, I, it might just be over, bro. I ain't make it official, but it just might be over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... And I, I'm going to touch on that, too. I mean, you say it might be over, but um, so you 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 didn't 100 percent put basketball in your rearview mirror because you coach. You coach at Pius High School, the high school that you played at, you know, use the Pius High School alumni and. Go Popes. Yeah, <laughs> go Pope. So. Since basketball got put on pause, how has the coaching been for you? How, how the coaching been for you? How, is it keeping your mind like, like it, yeah, I'm still around this basketball, you know, versus like, honest, 
it's kind of making it not harder, but it's kind of tough because it's like, fuck, bro. Like, I play with our team, and when I'm out there hooping, like, granted, they are high school and I'm a lot older, but I'm still capable of doing what I what I, what, I'm, what I can do. Like, I feel like I still should be hooping, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I'm around basketball. Like, like I'm able to feed into the young kids. I'm able to to teach. I'm able to direct. I'm able to guide. I'm able to mentor. I'm able to tell them things that maybe I didn't know at the time at their age and stuff like that. So just seeing young people develop it with the training and with the coaching, man, it's, it's, it's been fun, but at the same time, it's been a little hard. Okay. Yeah. And how long have you been coaching for? Uh, this will be my second year at Pius, but I did, I mean, so I coached uh, AAU a few years. I coached ABC Young Lions, like not this past AAU season, but last AAU season. I coached the Phenoms like three years ago, four years ago when they had like Seth Trimble. Now he going to North Carolina. They had a couple other guys, Danilo, my guy that's going to Miami. It's a couple other guys on that team. Steve Clay going to like UIC in Chicago. So there's a few yeah. guys I coached on that team, but so I've been coaching and been around basketball to coaching stuff for a minute, but this will be my second year doing it in a high school level. Yeah, yeah, and that's good. It seems like you like really interested in the coaching. And um, like I said, I know um, I know you personally, so I know you do the coaching. And uh, you also have Stay Paranoid, where you train. Stay Paranoid Basketball Academy. Yeah, yeah, and I want you to tell us a little bit about that because I know you help, you know, kids, high school kids, pros, you know, collegiate. You know, if you want to share about what Stay Paranoid about, man, and we appreciate that. So pretty much uh, the Stay Paranoid thing came from, mm-hmm. like, I actually got it from Isaiah Thomas. Y'all, y'all know like, Isaiah Thomas that played in the NBA. Uh, y'all, I'm not going to explain who he is, but he used to have, he used to always say the Stay Paranoid thing, like when he do his pictures and videos and stuff like that, but he stopped years ago. But I always thought like that was a good saying, like stay paranoid. You can use that in any aspect of life, basketball, business life. It's like you always should be paranoid that somebody is trying to take your job, trying to take your spot on the basketball team, trying to take your girl, trying to take your money, trying to take your life. So so you got to stay paranoid. Like, hold on now. Let me make sure I'm on my toes. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody. No, I'm just playing. But. So I, that's how I really came about that. But it's basically, man, I'm out here. I want to stay around basketball. I love basketball. So if I'm not going to be playing it, I would rather share what I know, my knowledge, my my, my skill set, everything I know about basketball, everything I was taught throughout my year from coaches, my dad, um, other players, other coaches, whoever the case may be, you. Whoever, would, if I learned, you know what I'm saying, if I, I know I've learned stuff from you too as well. So anything that I can teach to put on any kid, no matter the age, my youngest actually client is six years old right now. He just turned six. So if you want to play basketball, you want to learn about the game, you want whatever the case may be, you want any questions you might have about basketball, that's pretty much what my platform is for, what I started Stay Paranoid for, and pretty much just the pour back into the community. I really want to start a nonprofit from it. Um, for you, let the, the underprivileged kids, bro, we got a lot of talent in Milwaukee. We just misguided. We got a lot of people that don't want the best for our kids. And for me personally, I had the best growing up, not the best, but my parents gave me the best with what they had and what they could. We wasn't rich, but basketball, they poured it all into me. So I would just want to give other kids that same opportunity, you know what I'm saying, through basketball, and hopefully it'll guide them to do other stuff if they want to. Yeah, man, that's dope, man. And you know, we have we have a lot of we have a lot of trainers in Milwaukee, and y'all, uh, you know, uh, a lot of y'all visions are similar, you know. But you know, um, getting it from a household name, you know, Corey Lucius, y'all, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I want to. I want to help you pump your brand out, you know, what you got going on. Cause you know, I'm all for the community as yes, well, you know, especially for these kids that they need it, you know, and, you know, we had mentors, you know, and 
I always said this about you, Corey. Um, I, 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 listen, Tone was the first person that I seen. Because, you know, our era, we didn't have no trainers. We had lead. So, like, right. your father was the first person I seen taking you to the gym, working on your game. So, for you to get what your dad has instilled in you to pass it down to these kids, man, it's wonderful. And you keep doing that, man. And, and yeah, these so kids so. need it. These young men need it, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You helping everybody all around, all across the board. Uh, and, and I also want to bring up, um, you know, I know you just started your pro runs, you know? Um, so I want you to touch on your pro runs. You know, I know you wanted to, um, quote unquote, have a like, Rico Hines, but you're trying to have it, you know, Milwaukee style though. So I want you to touch right. on that because that just started, you know, and getting going too. So pretty much, man, we're gonna have every summer. I'm trying to do this, but I I I I, I don't want to only focus on the pro runs as far as only pros. I'm gonna do other uh runs. Actually, I'm in the works of trying to get like a little high school run together for just a freshman, maybe. And then we'll probably do every age group and then maybe have a combined one or something like that. But like in these other cities, if y'all know basketball has, even when I grew up, like basketball is prevalent in these other cities. Like people really care. Pros that come back to their cities, they care. Jamal Crawford's to Seattle, the guys in Atlanta, the guys in Florida, the guys in New York, the Rayford Austins, the the guys in Texas and them big cities, the guys in California, the guy, those guys that made it to the NBA, they actually go back to their hometowns and play basketball. They actually go to their cities and go and play basketball. Rico Hines got one of the biggest ones in LA and that's where all of the pros go to go play basketball. So I know I'm probably not going to get it to that type of standard and that type of level, but if we could do it to where we got a lot of pros in Milwaukee, we got NBA guys now in Milwaukee. If them guys come back and we all can get in the gym and all can correlate off each other, bounce ideas off each other, the older guys can, all of our vets who are pros can get in the gym with the high school guys and show them the ropes, teach them, you know what I'm saying? Just put a little knowledge in their brains and let them guys pick their heads and their brains and everything like that. If all of us just come together and make it as big as these other cities, we can literally be as big as these other cities because we have the talent. We've yeah. got the talent. We've always had the talent. Not even from, even before me, the Greg Browns, the Devin Harris's, the, the, all of those guys, guys that got drafted out of Milwaukee, man, man, if they would have came back and did what, what they were, I'm not going to say what they're supposed to do because we all live our own separate lives and ain't no supposed to, you not to, whatever. But we didn't have that guidance. Like I didn't, I knew Devin personally. I don't want to put him out there, but I knew Devin personally. And there was never a point where I sat down and talked to Devin like one-on-one -on -one about life, basketball. I wasn't able to add, pick his brain, ask him questions. He knew how good I was. I played on his younger AU team. He didn't ever sit down with me and talk to me like that. So if we can do that, if we can have Loon come back, Jordan Poole come back, Tyler Hero come back and talk to these high school dudes and you know what I'm saying? They'd be able to talk to you just like you're a regular guy, man. Come on, let's do it. And that's really what I'm trying to do. That's really what I'm trying to do. Not yeah. only for the pros, though, because we got a lot of high school guys that's coming up. We got a lot of middle school kids that's coming up. That's cold. You know what I'm saying? So if I could have those type of runs for everybody, for everybody, let's just do it. I need to, let's just do it. In the next couple of years, I'm trying to get me a, a gym built, a facility built. So everybody can have somewhere to go in the city. We don't have to go to Wauwatosa. We don't have to go to Brookfield. We don't have to go to uh, Waukesha. We don't have mm -hmm. to go to Brown Deer or whatever, even though that's kind of close to Milwaukee. We can go in the city of Milwaukee. Yeah. We all can come who? Stay paranoid basketball, baby. Watch out for it. <laughs> yeah, on my life. And I thank you for uh, sharing all of that stuff, man. And, you know, I'm gonna make sure I have this all in the comments. And, you know, once the video posts and everything, and, you know, I know you got a lot of stuff in store. And, you know, you just keep it coming and keep doing for the community, you know, and um, before I let you go, though, you know, I'm, uh, I want to ask you this one last question. Um, if you can change the direction 
and it can be basketball or even life. If you could change the direction, Corey, if you could change one direction in your life or, you know, basketball career, what would it be? Mm, that's a good question, man. That's, that's a good one. Honestly, that's kind of like a regret question. How I'm taking it is kind of like a regret. Like, what do you regret? But I know that's not what you're asking me, but I never, I don't regret anything in my life. And it's cliche to say it because everybody says it. Oh, my mistakes make me who I am today. Everything I didn't been through made me who I am today. But that, I, that's really who I that's I, that's really how I feel. Yeah. Like me not me making a mistake not to tell Joe D that what I told him. Me making my mistake at Michigan State. Me making my mistake not picking the, the deal to go to Greece instead. You know what I'm saying? I feel like all of those. Or it it it, pro it it probably was in God's plan, like for me not to be where I wanted to be, where I felt like I was supposed to be. Maybe he said, Corey, you know what? I want you to just be able to tell kids what not to do, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's 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 my mindset now, though. Like I used to be mad, like fuck, bro. Why the fuck? I know I'm supposed to be in the NBA. How the fuck am I not in the NBA? Like, I used to be mad because I know I'm supposed to be there. Everybody still say this shit, and I just kind of, like, brush it off. Like, bro, yeah, I know, bro, whatever. Because it don't really matter to me now. Mm -hmm. Back then, I used to be angry. Not even angry. I used to be like, fuck, bro. Like, I fucked some shit up. Like, I could have did. I could have been playing EuroLeague, make me millions of dollars. I got a bunch of friends that play in the EuroLeague that I play with, got a bunch of friends that I play with and against an NBA. I look at that sometimes, not now, but I used to look at that like, fuck, I supposed to be doing that. But now it's just like, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't God's plan. Now it was my plan, but his plan for me was to pour everything that I know on everybody else. So I don't regret nothing. I wouldn't change no path in my life. Uh, I'm grateful for everything I've been through. Like. You know what I'm saying? Two Final Fours. I didn't make it to the NBA, but I did, was able to experience a bunch of other countries. I played basketball for eight years. I was able to explore some other stuff. Two good kids, two beautiful kids out of it. Not saying that they came from overseas relationships or nothing, but you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't take a path, a different path for my life for sure. Man, my dog. And that's why I love you, man. Y'all give it up for my boy, Corey Lucius, man. Ooh. State alumni, Iowa State alumni, man. And, and we know he's supposed to be a McDonald's All-American, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Walkie. The state of Wisconsin, y'all owe me something. Yeah. <laughs> something, bro. Y'all owe me something. Unreal. But, man, I appreciate you, bro, coming to the Barcode Podcast, 414, baby. <laughs> Corey Lucius, baby. We out. Appreciate y'all, man. Thank y'all for following my journey, man. It's been one hell of a journey, y'all. So I appreciate y'all, everybody that stuck with me and everybody that be going against me on Facebook, man. I see the comments. My cousins tell me, Barco, tell me, you feel me. I just refuse to indulge in ignorance. Y'all yeah. cool, bro. Yeah, love. Barco love, podcast. Bro. All right, y'all. <laughs> Just touched down, back on road, counting money, man. You know how it goes. Hit the vip and tell my bitch to strike a pose. Hop in mode, hop in mode.